said I'm a crush. Welcome to Unsung. I'm your host, Anthony Walker. This time we're coming to you from the secret lair of Sorgatron Media, Escaping the Rain. We hope you enjoyed part two of our veteran series. We will finish it up next month with a special interview with Rocky Blyer and hear how wounded veterans have a chance at a normal life. Today, we go back to school at Greensburg Salem Middle School as their students get a lesson in CPR. We continue to stay in Westmoreland County with a submitted video from St. Vincent College detailing a unique part of their campus's history. But first, as always, let's take a look at what's happening with our area nonprofits. In an effort to revamp the icon that long symbolized accessibility on everything from parking lot signs to bathrooms, is gaining traction with New York City agreeing to adopt a new look. New York City plans to adopt a redesigned handicapped symbol. An update version of the seemingly standard blue and white handicapped symbol will soon be plastered across New York. Rather than depict a static person in a wheelchair, the new icon displays an active, in-motion version of life with a physical disability. It's such a forward-moving thing, Victor Kalis, commissioner of the New York Mayor's Office for People with Disabilities, told the Chronicle of Higher Education. Backers of the new icon, which was spearheaded by a philosophy professor at Gordon College of Massachusetts, says they hope that the adoption by the nation's largest city will lead to more widespread acceptance of the design. James Bendel, executive director of the Westmoreland County Community Foundation, has been honored with the First Class Patriot Achievement Award, acknowledging his years of service to the community after his years of service to the country. The award was presented by the Financial Planning Association of Pittsburgh at a ceremony at Soldiers and Sailors Memorial Hall. Mr. Bendel, 74, joined the Navy in 1960 and retired a Navy captain in 1989 after four years of active duty and 25 years in the reserves. He became actively involved with nonprofit organizations in 1968, serving in a variety of board and management positions. I never knew my uncle, who died in World War II, said Mr. Bendel. I figured if he could give up his life, then I could give up a few years of mine to serve my country. In this country, we have something in our DNA that encourages service, be it to our country or our community. Mr. Bendel was chosen from 17 finalists selected from veterans across western Pennsylvania. Along with the award, the organization will donate $10,000 in Mr. Bendel's name to the Veterans Place of Washington Boulevard, which provides shelter and services to homeless veterans. In recognition of Mr. Bendel's award, the Pittsburgh Foundation is awarding an additional $2,500 to Veterans Place. I used to work to build buildings. Now I'm helping to build a system of perpetual giving for our county, said Mr. Bendel. I believe you can do something or do nothing. Even after 74 years, I'm not ready to do nothing. Our producer Mike Sorg went back to school and learned valuable life-saving lessons. Let's take a look at what he learned. Let me tell you, when I was 21, my mom had a heart attack in front of me, my dad, and my brother, and nobody could do CPR. We called 999, which is the emergency services in England, and we literally stood there and watched my mom dying as we waited for the ambulance to come. We've been fortunate to have funding from the local area foundations to support training of CPR in the seventh grade student population in Westmoreland County. It's been kind of a campaign um, that we've worked with the community foundation and others to try to fund um, to basically train as many people as we can in CPR. Dr. Peter Saffer, who is known as the father of CPR, did a study funded by the National Institute of Health to prove the optimal time to train CPR. And he discovered that it was in fact seventh grade. The seventh graders have the best retention, um, they have the strength to be able to do CPR, and what we've learned um, more importantly is they still like their family and they go home and share their newfound knowledge. They're not too cool yet not to go home and share the knowledge with their family. And so the national average for every kit that we distribute, four people are trained, the student and three more people. Um, what's more interesting though is when the students challenge each other to train more people 
And so this school, for example, um, challenged the students to go home and train 10 additional people. So that's definitely a return on investment for the Community Foundation. Most of the students indicated they really enjoyed the lesson um, because it was hands-on, it got them up out of their seats, and they were actually doing something as opposed to reading about something or taking notes on something. They were actually performing CPR, not just watching someone uh, teach them how to do it or tell them how to do it. They were actually doing CPR. You know, the program has been in place. The American Heart Association is very strategic, and we worked with the Lairdall Corporation to design this kit that has everything you need for to learn CPR, choking, and AED placement in about 23 minutes. The kids go home with the students and they can then share the information. It's designed to take the fear out of CPR. So in other words, you can take it back out and refresh yourself in 23 minutes. The kits are available online um, to be sold retail. Um, and of course, we at the Heart Association attempt to raise funds to do charitable programs like the school program here at Greensburg Salem Middle School. Well, I was quite shocked that the um, survival rate for, C for sudden cardiac arrest is uh, about 5% nationwide, and I'm under the understanding that a similar program uh, in Seattle has increased the survival rate to like 45%. So if we can have the same success here that they had out west, uh, I think it'll be a great program. Westmoreland, as you know, has both urban and rural, so it's incredibly important. You know, if we have, if someone in the, in the urban area uh, has sudden cardiac arrest, your chances are, are very close to, the, to being close to the hospitals or care. But if you're out in the rural area, it can take as many as 20 minutes to get in for care. So it's incredibly important in, in the areas with mixed um, geography to make sure that people know CPR. In the seventh grade science classes, part of their curriculum is to learn about the um, human body, uh, the heart being a, a very critical part of that. So they spend a lot of time learning about the heart, the parts of the heart, the function of the heart. Um, so when they then come in here and learn about the um, learn CPR, they're able to, you know, uh, like I said, apply it a little bit better. We um, did like an organ on of our heart and lungs, and and it really helped us understand how CPR really affects the human body. Yeah, I was surprised to learn that uh, CPR, like whenever you perform CPR, you're actually like physically the person's heart and like you kind of operate the blood circulation. Before, I always thought that you had to do the rescue breath to save someone, but we under now, because of the class that we took in science, you understand that the airway, it will still go, it will still like contract and get air to your lungs when you're doing the hands-only CPR. So it doesn't really matter if you do the rescue breaths or not. Unfortunately, as a not-for-profit, we require funding to take the program, so we look to our, um, our individuals and foundations within the communities to help to fund the initiative. And we've been fortunate here in Westmoreland to have the support of um, the Dominion Foundation, the Snee Reinhardt Foundation, of course, the Greensburg Fund of the Community Foundation, um, and the Community Foundation Now and Forever Fund. And I think it appeals to the funders because they know that it's a pass it forward. So the students learn the skill, which they retain for their entire lifetime, but they also take it home and teach others how to, how to perform CPR. I feel that CPR is a skill that a lot more people need to know and hopefully uh, in the future, that'll save a lot more lives. St. Vincent College takes us back 50 years to a fire that devastated their campus in the subsequent rebuilding. These buildings were built to burn. They call them brick cased buildings, meaning brick on the outside, wood on the inside. And it scares you. And the, the biggest thing, if you looked at the picture, was is how can you stop it from going into something bigger? And it took all day long, just a little dribbling of water here and here to, to, to actually kill it. Because if they hadn't stopped the spread of it, it would have took this beautiful basilica down.
celebrate your independence in Shadyside with five days of fun. On June 29th, check out Sidewalk Chalk Art with Pro Amateur and Kid Divisions and a Jam on Walnut with Dancing Queen and Kelsey Friday. That Sunday, you can check out the I Made It Market and Charity Burger Cook-Off with Shadyside Restaurants. Monday, July 1st, and finally, Family Fun Night with the free outdoor movie showing of E.T. and food trucks. On Tuesday, July 2nd, shop and dine deals all week at your favorite independent Shadyside businesses. For more information, please visit the Facebook link on your screen. The East Pittsburgh Police Department Abused and Neglected Animal Fund operates on proceeds raised through fundraising, recycling, and private donations. All contributions go toward food, shelter, and medical care of animals rescued by the police department. You can help by checking out the 2013 flea market on July 13th at 506 Bessemer Ave East or their Facebook page. You might have recognized story tags and Twitter handles after our stories. We invite you to continue the conversation by tagging the nonprofit or using the story tag on Twitter. You can also reach us on Twitter at PGH on video or hashtag unsung PGH. As always, thank you for watching Unsung. Please share it with your friends. You can check out our previous episodes and our Unsung Uncut series on pittsburghonvideo.org. And as a reminder, we're on iTunes. The video version has been there for a while, but now if you have to leave and want us to go with you, you can take the audio version. Got a nonprofit you think is cool? Let us know why, and you might just find yourself here on Unsung. You can email your ideas to Christopher at whitlatchc at pghfdm.org. As always, I've been your host, Anthony Walker, reminding you to keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. We'll see you next time. Said I'ma crush it Call me the golden boy Cause it shine whenever I touch it Don't rush it The flow comes naturally Actually The whole hood after me Man